What is going on guys? They call me MP. Welcome to another video on the channel today. Today's video I wanted to provide some long range sniping tips and show you guys what I've learned um, from long range sniping over the past couple of weeks. My longest shot in the beta was about over a thousand meters. Uh, that was with a buddy of mine holding the target but I want to address some of that stuff and give you guys some tips again on long range sniping in general and address some of the things that you guys probably don't know about long range sniping. So if you enjoy this video consider leaving it a like and subscribing if you're new around here. Turning on the notifications will assure that you'll never miss a Ghost Recon video. So the first thing I do want to address is the distance in which enemies do render in and render out of your screen um, when you're scoping in especially when you're long-range sniping you can only snipe so far by yourself again unless your your buddy is holding the enemy for you and he's marked but if you're on your own like I was in the video it's kind of important at these ranges to know how far you could go um, in which you can actually see the enemies through your scope so for me on console this distance was about 500 meters you can see it on screen the enemy in the tower didn't appear on screen until about the 500 meter mark so I don't know if that's a graphical limitation of the Xbox or or if it's just the overall game engine, you PC guys are going to have to let me know and test the ranges yourself. But what I found most interesting is that, believe it or not, this number, uh, this 500 meter number, only applies to unmarked enemies. And after playing around with spotting and, and the recon class, the binoculars, the drone, whatever, um, I actually ran down the mountain myself, marked the enemy in the farthest tower um, at the center of the screen, and then I ran right back up the mountain to see just how far I could go um, if it's more than 500 meters with that um, spot attached to him. So the distance at which a spotted enemy retains on your screen and renders itself out is the 600 meter mark and that's really interesting because a simple mark or a simple spot provides an extra 100 meters of play if you're really going for those long range shots I would really encourage you guys to mark the enemies of course before you take the shot but there is one more test that I did run and it's going to be super important for those guys who can't have their friends hold their targets for them like I did in the beta uh, super long range sniping I'm talking about 500 plus meters 600 plus meters is not possible without this method that I'm going to tell you so go Going over what we previously tested, 600 meters was the distance in which a spotted or marked enemy disappears from your screen, but that was only when you're not scoped in. And what I mean by that is that a spotted enemy will disappear completely from your screen at the 600 meter mark if you're not scoped in on him whatsoever. So what would happen if we go past that 600 meter mark, but the entire time we're moving backwards away from the target, we're scoped in on him? What would happen? What would the distance be? Essentially, how far can a solo player go to shoot these targets at long ranges while actually being able to physically see them in the scope. So I tested that exactly. I went down to the mountain, marked the enemy, walked all the way back up past that 600 meter mark and scoped in on the enemy and continued to walk backwards until I actually ran out of mountain. And that distance that I actually eventually got to was about 700, 750 meters. Now I don't know if there's a cap on this. Again, the only reason I got to 7, 750 meters while scoped in is because I ran out of mountain and I would have lost the line of sight on the target. But I'm going to say a safe bet is 600 plus meters as long as you're scoped in and your target is marked. He will render out of your scope and you can actually physically see him standing there in the tower. So what's cool about this find is that this essentially allows solo players to go as far as they possibly can, take their long range sniping to that next level. If they don't want to have a friend hold the target or cheat the system, you could do this by yourself and you could really get these long range shots done at extreme ranges. If you guys want to test out that cap and really find out what the max distance is while the target is marked as well as when you're scoping in, please let me know. Somebody test it. If you can find a better mountain to do it on, I'd really like to know. Like a thousand plus shots on a mountain high enough and far enough while you're scoped in without losing a line of sight in your target would be absolutely crazy. So no long range sniping video, no sniping video in general would probably be complete without sharing some of the equipment I use. So the first thing you definitely want to get is the highest magnification scope in Ghost Recon, the T5XI. Available in the top left corner of the Ghost Recon Wildlands map in the province called Kiwani. I'm in a storage container in like an oil refinery. So grab that as fast as possible. The in-game tooltip describes it as a powerful sniper rifle scope and I'm pretty Pretty sure when you ADS it ends up being a 6x scope so uh, in my opinion that's a little bit disappointing considering I would have liked to see an 8x or even a 12x in Ghost Recon but as, as far as I know strongest magnification in the game let me know if I'm wrong please correct me but the T5XI as well as the long barrel attachment you guys can find in San Mateo are probably the two most important attachments you're going to find for long range sniping in Ghost Recon they both increase damage as well as range and I, I personally believe those are the most important stats you're going to want to change for your sniper rifles in Ghost Recon we're going to talk more about that later though so grab these as fast as you can and we could proceed to talk about skill points now prior to equipping any skill points for for my sniper scope steady aim no skill points attached this is what the weapon sway is going to be like and the weapon is just all over the place no long range sniping um, with this weapon sway is going to be accurate at all if you don't equip any skill points so after equipping all the skill points needed for long range sniping i would recommend maxing out stable aim this is going to give you 65 percent reduction of that sway and, and trust me that is a huge difference and even on top of that i recommend going 
going for that bonus medal in San Mateo. I'll provide the location for you guys in a second, but 80% total reduction on weapon sway is going to be super awesome and super important for you guys for those long range shots. So here is the location of that bonus medal um, that gives you that extra weapon sway reduction stat. Really important just south of central Mateo, San Mateo. So again, really would encourage you guys to grab that as well. It's really just about maximizing your efficiency as a sniper, reducing all the sway you can, um, making your shots as accurate as you possibly can before you even take the shot. So do the prep work, it'll pay off in the end. So even after capping out stable aim, I would take it one step or even two, three steps further and getting the elite skill and the weapon skill line to further increase your accuracy at long ranges. Here's where you guys have a little bit of wiggle room. Um, of course, to get the elite skill, you do have to equip and put one point into each tier of each skill here, but um, advanced suppressor is great. I mean, that's great to have just in general. Um, if it was up to me, I'd put more skill points into ammo capacity or vehicle destruction just because I really, really hate enemy helicopters when I'm trying to take these long range shots and they just ambush me and screw me up and then I got threat and it's all it's all bad news. But the range elite skill is absolutely fantastic. 30% accuracy increase. Every sniper should pick this up if this is what you're going for. So now we get to the fun part of the video, which is bullet drop. And I just want to start off by saying that the bullet velocity as well as the bullet drop in this game, Ghost Recon, is really not all that realistic. Just keep that in mind when we're discussing this because a lot of people get salty when we talk about bullet drop in Ghost Recon. Don't take it personally. It's just this is how it works in Ghost Recon. And please let me know how you guys feel about the sniper mechanics in the comments. So the goal here was to test the bullet drop over various ranges, over various guns with suppressor equipped and unequipped. So what I did was I marked a tree, proceeded to shoot a couple of rounds with one weapon, then equip the suppressor, take some follow-up shots for some comparisons, and then back up another 100 meters and so forth until we get an accurate representation of how bullet drop works in this game. Keep in mind that elevation is totally a statistic that does matter as far as bullet drop goes and sniping goes in Ghost Recon. For all intents and purposes of this video, that, that statistic is completely thrown out the door because I'm on an airfield and me and the tree are on a flat surface, but be aware that different heights and varying differences between where you are and where your target is is going to affect your bullet. So what I found from my test is that 100 meters out, it really isn't going to make much of a difference. You could put the suppressor on, you could take the suppressor off. Your bullet is pretty much going to go dead center every single time without much effort, as most would expect it to. I mean, 100 meters isn't really all that far as far as Ghost Recon is concerned. Keep in mind, we're talking Ghost Recon terms, guys. Uh, 200 meters out, really not that much of a difference again. The bullet flies dead center, if not almost dead center, like pretty close to it. And I was surprised because 200 meters is a decent enough away where you would think that bullet drop would take itself into account, but I guess that's really not the case here. So at 300 meters, you do start to see some bullet drop. It's definitely more noticeable than the 200 meter mark, but I was surprised to see that the difference in drop between the suppressor and no suppressor shots was pretty negligible. And at 300 meters, very surprising, very unrealistic, but let's take it for what it is. 300 meters, you'll start to see some bullet drop, but 400 meters, is where you're really going to notice that drop and I don't even think I put my target marker on the tree high enough to take into account the full effect of the bullet drop but regardless you could really start to see the bullet taper off at 400 meters um, on a level playing field horizontally but this is the point of the video where I said we were going to talk about weapon statistics what stats matter the most because believe it or not after testing weapon drop between uh, the MSR as well as the M40 at about 300 meters away you guys are going to notice that both of those weapons with their varying statistics of accuracy range penetration they have different stats regardless of those differing stats they have the same bullet drop and if it's not completely identical it is like super similar like like down to the dot their their bullet drop is comparable identical it's crazy and it, it makes people wonder if Ubisoft copy and pasted sniper rifle mechanics and and the only real statistics that matter here if that is true are weapon damage because the amount of shots that somebody takes before you kill them is kind of important when you're a sniper body shot or headshot as well as the rounds in the magazine so Feel free to test this on your own with other sniper rifles, but between these two rifles, I found that the bullet drop both goes to that, what is it called, one mil dot range on the scope, so kind of disappointing, and, and if that's the case with all the sniper rifles, super disappointing, so. Today's top featured comment of the day does come from Crazy Irish Gaming, and he does mean to say, is anybody hyped for Ghost Recon? And I really am, like, despite its flaws, like, it's a great game, and I really enjoy playing it, um, although the sniper rifle copy and paste, if that is the case uh, from the testing, that is not excusable, and they really need need to rework them from the ground up, give them individual statistics, give them individual personalities, man. Because of course, in real life, these things behave completely differently, and we should be able to feel that in game. So if you guys do want to be featured in the top comment of the day, please share your thoughts below, and I'll pick the top rated comment. Be vocal about this game. Be vocal about the community. Share your thoughts, what you like and dislike. This game could grow and improve. It's come a long way, and I absolutely love the brand, and I want to see it really reach its maximum potential. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next video.